Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to work on this uh, Commodore 64. Um, it's got the dreaded black screen. Uh, I have a, a dead test cartridge here and I get no no flashes on the screen. Uh, I, it does look like I'm getting a signal but no flashes. Uh, I've done a little troubleshooting on it already. Uh, I've got a little cheap little scope here. Uh, and I've checked you know the data lines and stuff on the the CPU, the VIC, uh, the PLA. Um, but when I was going through with my multimeter, the five volt rail seemed to be a little bit low. Um, it's the, I don't think it's low enough to keep it from running, but at the same time, you know, it does seem a little low to me. It's right around four point six volts. Uh, towards the back of the board um, and I'll show you where you can test that. Um, I've already ruled out the power supply. The power supply is good. Um, I've also got one of these aftermarket power supplies. Um, but uh, these are both good. So it does the same thing. doesn't matter which one you use. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the the 5 volt regulator and the 7805. While I'm in there, the 12 volt rail looks good, um, but I'm going to replace that one as well just because I'm in there. So uh, let me get stuff set up and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so I got the board out um, and here's the board in case you're interested. This one's a 250407. Uh, revision B. Um, this is my 5 volt regulator. Um, so I know all these chips are socketed and I'm, I'm not going to pull them out at the moment. Um, this thing is is DOA already so I knew that when I purchased it. Um, I do have correct voltage coming out of my power supply and I'm actually using this modern one. I'm not I'm not going to use the original. The original does have the correct voltage, but you know, let's just rule out some, you know, one thing and I like to use this on on all these Commodores anyway, so So I've got my multimeter out. Um uh I think you can see right there. So let's get this plugged in and uh, let's uh, t test the power regulator first and I'm going to, I'm testing on pin two. So we're just going to switch that on. I'm just going to grab ground from here and yeah, we're getting 4.99, which should be okay. Um, I would expect a little bit higher, but you know, that's okay. So if I check over here on on uh, this connector here, just these last two pins, you can see I'm only getting 4.6, um, which I think is a little bit low. Now, this is this area right here is where they had, had put that reset button, and I took that off. So let me. Uh, let me pull this out and replace it with a new one and then I'll bring you back and we'll we'll compare. Okay, well it is the next day. Um, I did replace the voltage regulators and I do have a bit more volt voltage now. Um, but I did notice, I still have a black screen, I did notice that uh, this uh, Oki Data memory chip is gets really hot, so I think next I'm going to replace that. <clears throat> and I did, I did order uh, order some uh, just because I don't I don't have a working one to to test with this. Um, and then I've got some uh, some sockets, and I'm going to socket that just so we have it. Um, I'm also going to suspect this MOS chip here. This is the 7708. So I've got one 
hopefully it's here today. Um, I had to order one of those too. So uh, I'm going to pull this out, put a socket in there, and then uh, we'll see what it'll do then. Okay, so I've uh, I put a socket in here and put the new new memory chip in here. Uh, this particular memory chip is a it's an MSM, and uh, I believe that was one of Commodore's cheap ones. But I do have three of those, so um, I've got a little TV over here on the side that I'm looking at, um, and I'm going through RF. And let's turn it on. Still getting nothing. We'll leave it on for a minute. Um, it's not getting hot like it was before. But it really hasn't been on much. But let's uh, let's do this dead test again. Um, maybe, uh, maybe we'll get something here. <clears throat> uh, let's move these screws out of the way so there's no accident here. Okay. And then I'm going to continue to feel for and I should have done this first, um, just feeling for chips, but and I still got nothing on the dead test, still just a black screen. I do have a signal, it's just a black screen. Yeah, those are all nice and cool. So let's... Uh, not sure if you can how well you're gonna see that or not but let's check voltage so I'm just checking the 5 volts here and I got 5.1 over there where before I had what I believe 4.66 um, and I guess I didn't uh, show you the difference on the on the uh, voltage regulator so on the output of this one we now have oh that's the input we've got 5.03 4 and on the 12 volt side there's the input and the output is 12 on the money so I think we're good with power now. I think it might just be a matter of uh, one of these chips being dead. Um, I do have a uh, one of those cheap uh, oscilloscopes, you know, the little Chinese ones. Um, it seems to work good. Um, it's just this little thing here, and I've been using this uh, to look at signals and stuff. And uh, I do have a big, a big one in HP, but it's just warmer here. So, but this this might not be the most accurate, but it does. I, I like using this more than I do a lot my uh, logic analyzer. So, so we're still. Yeah, see all these are nice and cool. Now, so we've got uh, this one here, U4, which I believe is the kernel ROM. It's a little warm. It's, it's actually warmer than the, the CPU is right now. Um, I, I, pretty sure I do have one of these. Let's, uh, let me see if I can find it and let's swap that out. Okay, so I did, I do have one. 
Um, I'm pretty sure this one works. Uh, this one's a, this is just a 901-227. You can maybe see there. Um, I'm gonna unplug power. And let's, uh, yeah, that's still warm, so let's pull this out. And let's make sure we put this in the right direction. We've got the notch right there. Okay, I think we're okay there. Okay, still have the dead test in there, so. You know, I've never worked on uh, one of these that was so difficult to get, just to get video. Okay, so, because usually, you know, the PLA, which I have another PLA as well. I do now. I've, so I've ordered a, I've ordered quite a few of these. I'm hoping to get some more of these Commodores in so I can get them working again. Okay, so let's turn it on. I'm sure that's going to take a few minutes to do its thing. Oh, and now we have uh, we have our dead test working here. I'm not sure. It's my little TV. Now this is on. This is RF. I apologize for the scrolling. So I'm wondering if. I pull the dead test out if I if I can go to basic. Yeah, don't don't mind my mess down there. We're just gonna let this run. So far, so good. Now I don't have all the dongles to hook up to this, so I know some of the stuff is going to be bad once I switch the diagnostic. Okay, now the screen's going away. It will probably just start over. We're in real time here. Okay, come on, you gonna do something? There we go. Well, sounds like the uh, SID's working, so. Let's uh, get you back down here. And uh, I'm gonna turn this off. I just wanna see if this is gonna go into basic. So we're gonna pull that out. Yeah, that's not nearly as hot as it was. So, yeah, okay. So let me move you back over here. I should've just left you, but yeah, I know I got a mess there, so. So there's my little TV. Um, I am hooked up to RF. I don't, I don't have an AV dongle, but if I remember correctly, your AV is gonna go through your RF box anyway, so um, let's turn it on. And there we go, we got basic. And it looks like we have the correct amount of uh, memory. So I guess next is to maybe hook up the keyboard and see if it actually works so I guess uh, yeah let's let's do that uh, so so far we got a bad bad memory and a bad kernel ROM so the SID is good the PLA is good BIOS is good everything else seems to be okay but we'll we'll hook this keyboard up um, and uh, see if uh, we can get something else going here. So give me a minute. Okay, so I've 
I've got the keyboard hooked up. I don't have anything else. Um, so this particular one has a uh, little button here, a reset button, and I and I I took this off. Um, very small wires. I don't know what that is. Twenty six. He did. But they've got on the user port. There's a lot of solder. So uh, when I'm ready to button this back up, we'll uh, we'll take care of that. But in the meantime, let's uh, let's just set this here. I'm gonna turn this on. We're at we're at the basic here. So I'm gonna try and prop you up here. Again, don't mind my mess. So I'm just gonna go through a bunch of these keys. I guess shift lock is on. Yeah, shift lock was on. And let's do those again. Okay, well, I mean, everything looks like it's uh, working. So, it's about time. So I know this is just taking minutes for you guys. <clears throat> and I, I do appreciate you uh, watching my videos. But this has taken me over a month of screwing around with. So I'm ecstatic over this. Um, I got this at the second hand store. It was a St. Vincent de Paul or something like that. And I think, uh, I think I got it for like 25 bucks and there was no guarantee that it was gonna work. Um, so I knew that going in. Um, I, I think I want to clean it up too. So over here, there's some schmutz. Um, I'm gonna kind of scrub on that. I've got the same schmutz down in here. It looks like there was some water in here at one time, but the board itself looks pretty good. Um, I can't really tell if that there was a lot of rework other than that memory module that I I did and the voltage regulators but uh, I'm gonna put also some new new processor grease on here I cleaned it off um, I haven't ran this a whole lot so and I and I think uh, if you're gonna do one of these I think one of the big mistakes that I made was let's set that over there I didn't leave, I wasn't leaving this on long enough to really tell which chips were getting hot. And I would suggest that if you're doing this, you know, leave it on for five or 10 minutes, I guess. Um, so you can feel if any of these chips are getting too hot. So, and actually before, before I get too far into this, let's flip this over to the diagnostics. And again, I don't have the dongles. So, make sure that's turned off before I plug it in. And let's get our RF back on here. Okay, so I set you up on a little tripod here. Just so you don't have to get dizzy with my shakiness. And this is the diagnostics. Um, again, this is a CRT. Um, I'm going over RF, so apologize for the scroll. But I don't have the dongle, so there's going to be some things that come up on here. They're bad. Um, and without the dongles, there's no way to clear those. So 
as far as I know. Maybe one of y'all know a way without dongles to get everything to pass, so. But the thing works. There's the SID. Um, I can type stuff on it. I don't have a cartridge to try, so uh, not at the moment. But I'm pretty sure that that we're good to go on this. So let me uh, let me bring you back up here, and then we'll finish getting this thing buttoned up. Okay, so now now I'm gonna get this uh, RF shield soldered back on. So. I know a lot of guys out there uh, don't do this, and you know what, that's fine. Um, I'm actually gonna do it. So I've got my iron up to about 550 degrees, and I've got a chisel tip on here. Because um, I am soldering this onto the ground plane. Oh, there we go. All right, so there we go with that. Um, then we've got we got this little thing here. Kind of move the wires a little bit. So let's see if we can uh, tack this on. Let me move this to the side a little bit. There's some solder on there, so I'm just going to try and heat it up and put it on there without burning myself. solder that onto here so I think I'm gonna go back this direction I'm gonna try and stay in the back here best we can We're going to put this right here on this one. I'm going to attempt it anyway. Oh, come on, cooperate. So, all this button's going to do is just reset the computer. Um, So you don't really need to do this. There we go. Okay, let's do the same to this side. Do I have, no, I don't think I have enough solder on that one. There we go. There we go. Now we got our button back. So now when we put it together, I can just put that back in. 
and what else do we got? Um, I think we're good. I think we're ready to put this back together. So let's move some of this stuff out of the way. I'll turn that iron off. Okay. And let's uh, put this board back in here. Okay. So these are your short screws. And these are your three long case screws. You can see the difference there. Um, but you still need to be careful not to uh, tighten that up too much. So I'm just going to put this in and until it stops. Okay, so there we go there. So next, uh, let's uh, let's see. We need to put this back in. I guess we can maybe plug our keyboard in first. You know, see if I was doing this, I would have just put this like back in here somewhere. But it did come this way. So we've got missing hole right there. So I think that's uh no, I think we're over over one too many. Yep. There we go. Okay. I should have put a longer wire on there. Shame on me. It's okay. I mean, this thing's gonna be in this case, so. I've got a little nut right here. There, I'm gonna plug in the power real quick. I know you guys can't see it, but I am plugging it in. There we go. Now the the top RF shield I'm not putting on. I did get some processor grease on there. We can put these uh, three longer screws in. Okay, so there's our little button. Um, I'll show you how that works, just in case you've not seen it before. Okay, now that we got it booted up here, I'll put some trash on the screen. Uh, I'm going to push that button and that's all it does. Uh, if you know if there's a benefit to having that button, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Um, if you turn it off with the switch and then turn it back on, you know, again, it takes a couple of seconds. Um, And it takes a couple of seconds when you hit the reset button. So, so there you go. That's kind of that's what the reset button does. All right. So that's how the reset button works. You know, again, it's just a little button that you know on the back here. Uh, we've got a we've got a working 
Commodore. You can see the light's still on and I just reset it, but but uh, yeah, uh, I didn't need a whole lot of tools to do the repair on this. Uh, most of it was just tracking stuff down. Uh, multimeter, uh, this is the one I've been using. Um, this is just a basic meter. You don't need anything that fancy. Um, also a dead test cartridge. Now you can get these on uh, Etsy and Amazon and eBay. Uh, I I actually ordered this through PCBWay and just made my own. You don't have to do that, you know, but that's your, that's another option. Um, got this little oscilloscope, a little Chinese one. I've got a big one, uh, but where I'm doing the repair on this, you know, you can see my workbench isn't very big so I was using this and it worked just fine uh, this particular one has this little uh, component tester on it that it's kind of neat I've got a little component tester but it's nice to have it all there uh, you're gonna need a soldering iron um, if your chips aren't socketed um, it doesn't have to be this one but I use a soldering iron a lot, so I have this one. Um, you can use the cheap little ones. I see them, they're USB. You know, they work just fine. Uh, and a way to desolder, whether it's braid or a manual pump, doesn't matter, so as long as you've got something. And screwdrivers, uh, just to take it apart. So, that's it. So that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.